Shnautra Aure Mazda Hashem Vahu Vahishte Masti Ushtasti Ushtahamayatashai Vahishtai Hashem Baname Ahura Mazda To think a good thought, to speak a good word, to do a good deed is righteousness. Happiness comes to those who live with the consciousness of righteousness. And with that sentiment, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this is Meher Amal Saad, and welcome to Bahumata a program designed to build oneness with the consciousness of righteousness in humanity. The goal is not to grow the plant, but to plant the seed for each one of us to blossom with our own love, light, grace, joy, and peace. So sit back, relax, and get ready for this very special journey to enlightenment. And as you do, Please join me in giving a warm Zarthushti welcome to our very own Zarthushti neuroscientist from United Kingdom, Dr. Karishma Koka. Thank you very much, Baba Meher. Hama Zor, Hama Ashobad, or as we wish in Iranian, Hama Zor Bim, Ruze Garnik. We wish each one of you. Hamazori and a happy and healthy life with the messages of Asho Zarathustra Sahib and the Zarathustri Daina. We have a slightly different and very special program today in Bahumata. And it is with profound and constant love for Asho Zarathustra Sahib that we put up this program. The messages of Asho Zarathustra apply timelessly and are really time-tested messages. And the aim of Bahumata is to conserve and share this knowledge in the prayers, the principles and the practice of the Zarathustri Daina. To honor our priests and our knowledgeable elders. And to build a bridge of communication between the elders and the youth so that we have empowerment with knowledge and the leadership for the good of all through, as we pray in the Ahunavar, Shyotananam, good action. Therefore, with good thoughts, we aim to build fellowship, world peace, and happiness and prosperity for all. The Bahumata talks have a certain flow. They include each speaker is requested to give us the concept from the prayer with its significance in line of Humata. Lines and words and meanings from the prayer, hukta, and the speaker's own interpretation with good action, varshta. In their own way, they will do part three. And then we will have questions related to the talks. We are very grateful to all our seniors who have helped this program develop, including my grandparents, my grandfather and great grandfather. Our guiding light, Mabed Meheraban Firuzgari. Our guiding friend, the late Ravan Shad Mabed Soli P. Dastur. The mentor and facilitator of Bahumata, Mr. Meher Amal Sad. The supporter, Mr. Noshir Dadravala. Our support and technical expert, Mr. Yazdi Tantra. For my inspiration to Mr. Royington Munshi, to all our priests around the world, including the priests of the ZTF, who gave me the environment in which to develop, and to our seniors, elders, and all our parents. It is today the, the Varsi of our Sant Kukadaruji Sahib, and we honor him and give him our gratitude. Our program today 
will have four speakers, Mabed Zareer Bhandara, Ervat Zerxis Panthiki, Rashna Sanjana, and Dr. Professor Farshdane Goshras, PhD. And for arranging our speakers, I give great gratitude to Mr. Meher Amalsad and to Mr. Yazdi Tantra for technically supporting us. I will now request a hambandagi from respected Mabit Sahib Zareed Bhandara, before which we have a special message. We are deeply saddened to learn of the sudden and untimely death of Mr. Cyrus Palanji Mistry in a road accident today, an entrepreneur and leader who has taken other good work forward from the past to build a better future, which is why we are honoring him with a moment, with a minute's silence immediately after my message, before the Hambandagi from respected Mabad Sahib Zari. We are also praying for Ravanshad Mr. Jahangir, the brother-in-law of Ms. Mrs. Dr. Anahita Pandol, who passed away today, and her husband, Darius, who were in the same car as Mr. Cyrus Palanji Mistry, the late chairman of the Tata Group. We pray for their speedy recovery and will request Mabed Saheb Zarir to pray for the Ravan of each of these people in a moment. But before that, if we can all pray for them and think of them together. Mabad Zareer Sahib, when you are ready, I hand over to you for a humbandagi. Thank you. First, let's, let's recite three Ashim woes for our dear Cyrus Palanji Mistry oh. and Mr. Pando. Ashim Vahishtam asti, Oshtam asti, Oshtam amai, Ya ashai, Vahishtam yashim, Ashim bahu, Vahishtam asti, Oshta asti, Oshta amai, Ya ashai, Vahishta yashim, Ashim bahu, Vahishtam asti, Oshta asti, Oshta amai, Ya ashai, Vahishta yashim. Ms. Aris and Mr. Pandur, so progress further in the spirit world and may God grant our family members solace and strength to go through this challenging period in their lives. Now let's recite two Yatha Vairyas and one Ashimbo and start our program. Yatha Hu Vairyo Atharatush Ashao Chit Hacha Vangya Kush Dezrao Manangho Shot Nanam Angya Kush Mazdai Shatrim Cha Ahurai Aim Regubyo Dadad Vastao Rim Yatha ahu vairyo athau ratush ashau chint hacha vange kush dezdao manango shot nanam ange kush mazdai shatrim cha ahurai 
Ain Regubyo Dadad Wans Taurim Ashim Vahu Vahishtam Asti Ushta Asti Ushta Mai Yat Ashai Vahishta In Yashem God bless you. Um, but Mabet uh, Zari, may I make one more request before we take the message? We have, as a special program today, we have received um, some messages from Vada Dasturji Sahib, Dasturji Khurshed Dastur, and Vada Dasturji Cyrus Dastur of Surat, which we will request Mr. Yazdi Tansra to play. And then we will have a message from Mr. Noshir Dadravala after Mabet Saib Zari's uh, talk, um, and from Mr. Mi Dr. Miki Mehta. <coughs> in the interest of how important it is to build communion around the world within the Zarathustra community and with other people worldwide, within ourselves and with Ahura Mazda. Uh, but before that, being, um, Barad, being San Kukadaru Sahib's um, Barsi, may I request you for Kukadaru Sahib's prayer? Thank you, Mami. Nam Chesting Anoshing Ravan Ravani Lestro Jamshing Mervan Soram Idari and Bao Nam Chesting Anoshing Ravan Ravani Lestro Jamshing Mervan Soram Idari and Bao May Sant Kukadaru Dastrojis. Ravan, keep progressing further in the spirit world and may he keep guiding us, the mortals in this world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mahavad Sahib Zari. Ya nure dastagir, ya dastagir e nur, karam kar karima, rahem kar ya parvatgar, madad kar o nabi zat, hush tamari padshah. Thank you. Yazdi Sahib, please would you play the messages from Badada Sturji? Both the Varada students. Thank you. Thank you, Yazdi. Thank you, Vadada Sturji Khurshed Dastur of our respected Iran Shah for this message, where it says, Good evening. Though quite late, I take this opportunity to wish you all Sal Mubarak. Through this platform of Bahumata, I would like to express my congratulations to my dear friend and sincere Mabed, Ervad Zarir Bhandara. I have in many of my talks expressed the importance of a religiously pious and scripturally knowledgeable Mabed who is willing to share his knowledge and insight. This is the one way in which our religious traditions will be protected and our religion will be preserved. This is what Zarir has believed in and has made every effort in the direction of preservation. He takes the trouble to play a contributory role in organizing or being part of as many religious gatherings as he possibly can in his part of the world. What strikes me as very impressive is that he has not only encouraged and motivated his son, Ervat Saib Xerxes, but has mentored him to follow his passion. But Adasturji Sahib Khurshed Dastur goes on to say, and I quote, I am grateful to you, Zarir, though so far away from your roots, you have in the past 50 years helped lay a strong foundation of religious wealth for the Zoroastrians in the United States. I pray that Dada Rahura Mazda and Iran Shah, let your efforts bear fruit within our community and may you receive their blessings in abundance. Unquote. Thank you, Vada Dastuji Sahib. 
We will now have a message from Bada Dasturji Cyrus Dastur of Surat. Good evening, friends. I would like to thank for giving me an opportunity to speak a few words for Mahavata program. First of all, I myself, Bada Dasturji Cyrus and Dastur of Surat, Gujarat, like to congratulate our Zari F. Bandana of U.S. America to expand knowledge of Zoroastrianism and to give true guideline to every Zoroastrianist of all over the world with good thoughts, good words and good deeds. Because if we think good, we speak good and then we keep into action that is good deeds. These are main fundamental principles of Zoroastrianism. The world as it were depends only on this trial. Man must first of all form an idea of something in order to express that idea, speech is necessary. He expresses his thoughts to others through words or language. After forming a thought or after expressing that thought in words, he performs an action. If our thoughts are good, everything else will turn out good. If our thoughts are righteous, then the words giving utterance to these thoughts would necessarily be righteous and hence the deeds also would be righteous. This uh, ever Zahir Pandana has completed 50 years of serving our community. So I myself personally congratulate my Guru and may almost the blessings sour upon him forever. Amen. Normally, I would introduce Mabit Sahib, our respected senior Mabit Sahib, first. We were going to request uh, Mr. Mickey Mehta to come in after Mabit Sahib's um, speech, but as he has limited time, I will begin the introduction to Mabit Sahib Zareer and then bring Mr. Mickey Mehta in as a special token of appreciation for his time. So I'll give you the three most important things that Mabit Sahib Zareer has done and then request Mr. Mickey Mehta to unmute. Mr. Mickey, Mr. Our Mabit Sahib Zareer has had three major contributions, saving lives with the blood of his own body. As our Ashur Zarathustra had said, he dedicates his own breath to the work of the people Zari Sahib follows in those footsteps as well. He's also completed an advanced four-year priestly training course at the respected Atravan Educational Trust under our leadership of respected high priest, Dasturji Dr. Feroz M. Kotwal. He is also the recipient of the best student award for the entire four-year course. And he has had 50 years of consecutive unconditional priestly practice for which we give him gratitude. Um, Yazdi Sahib, please will you spotlight Dr. Mickey Mehta and then I will continue the introduction. Thank you. Very good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for this great platform to be a part of. Uh, around two years back, I think Meher Amal Sahib called me. An angel, I would say, Angel Meher called me and said that he's starting an endeavor called Bahumata and uh, Karishma, the young rising star of our religion, wanted support and I said, yes, let's be on. And the journey has been quite some of a tall order and I have seen so much of body of work gone into it. Coming to my friend Zareer, the LA Zoroastrian Conference 
where Azan Wadi invited me to speak, gave me my two brothers of my life, Meher Amal Sad and Zareer Bhandara. There's one qualification of Zareer which you uh, have missed, Karishma, is that Zareer's heart is larger than all oceans, seas, rivers, and wells, and skies put together. I've personally experienced this. While my business was quite down a few years back, I personally spoke to Zareer and Meher. Can you imagine that technology and thanks to technology, they recorded prayers and sent very individualistic, customized prayers for me, which I heard. And certainly things did change for good. I must say that today in this world of technology, to be a carrier of prayers and send prayers across seven seas through any medium is quite a boon. And it's only a boon. It's only a boon. It's a, it's a promise of a human righteousness to elevate the consciousness of the earth and the earthlings and also the whole universe to be activated to support the human beings alike. So when I was in New York a couple of months back for the Zoroastrian conference once again, uh, I mean, the amazing things I saw, I saw Karishma chaperoning her mother and at this young age, chaperoning an old mother and taking so much pains to give us so much love and attention was truly hard to move in Karishma. Uh, I'm, may all your endeavors come absolutely true. Also, I mean, a stalwart like Yazdi Tantra to continuously support this endeavor through this technological platform, without which the world wouldn't know about Bahumata. So technology is certainly a boon, transporting the vibrations of our religion the knowledge, the wisdom, and its ramifications, I would say, creative, positive, productive ramifications. So thank you, Yazdi. Yazdi on a personal level also has been very generous and been of a great support to me for which I thank him publicly once again. And thank you so much, God, to first make me a human and number two, make me a Zoroastrian. I'm very grateful to everybody. And my dearest friend, Zareer Bandara, whose ocean of knowledge, whose power of his vibration coming right from the vagus nerve below the navel, vibrating through his track, uh, respiratory track, passing through his anahata, which is heart, and his epiglottis being engaged and transcending the cosmos with the power of his words. It is truly amazing. You can literally feel the feelings of Meher when he prayer, prays, even a simple yatha where you're a shimbahu. What comes across that these great stalwarts have made me seem and look very small and humble and I bow before them because I always thought that I knew a lot till I met these two stalwarts. And thank you so much, everybody. My love and affection to all of you. Love you all. Thank you, Karishma, for this wonderful platform. Thanks, ESD, for allowing me to speak. And Zareer and Meher, your place is out there in heaven as on earth. So you will always be omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient always. Good luck. Bye-bye. Thank you, much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for those introductory words to Mabit Sahib Zareer. I will now read out the introduction put together by our mentor and facilitator, Mr. Neher Amal Sad, for Mabit Sahib Zareer Bhandara. In the light of him promoting communion with Ahura Mazda, with the messages of the Mas Diyasni Zarathushti Daina, with the messages of Asho Sahib Zarathustra Spitama, and promoting communion within each of ourselves with our own mind in the light of Yastaha 30.2 to listen, reflect, 
and then decide to build discrimination to take good action and to build communion with each other. So all four forms of communion. And the fifth form, the communion with all creations of nature, because the Fravashi, the spark of Ahura Mazda, is in each creation of the universe. So it is said, an actor on the silver stage or screen becomes a hero by saving lives. We have a real life hero among us who has saved over 1,500 lives. And with that amazing sentiment, it is my honor to introduce you to this very rare, extremely humanitarian head priest from California, who happens to be a fifth degree karate black belt of international repute and has quenched the religious thirst of thousands of Zartoshtis across the globe. He's also our featured Mabit speaker from the United States for the grand opening ceremony of Bahumata in January 2021, which was supported by a global Zartoshti audience of over 470 viewers. Mabit Saib Zarir is a vegetarian by choice and has saved more than 1,500 lives by donating his own blood, plasma, and platelets 523 times. He has quenched the religious thirst of thousands of Zoroastrians by voluntarily serving us, our Zarathustri community of North America and in India for the past 50 years. And if I may add, during COVID and subsequently, he has brought us all together through the platform of Zoom so that we can all come together in the spirit of Hambandagi and participate in the prayers, not attend, not view, not listen, but by doing all three to participate in the prayers, as he says, and participate in a communion with each other and Ahura Mazda. I now continue the introduction by Mr. Meher Malsad. During the pandemic, Mabad Zarir continued to serve the community and society by performing the following duties. Healing people through the power of prayers. Most of them got totally healed after requesting him to pray. In one mm. incident, a very well-known Zoroastrian of North America with a background in science had contracted COVID-19 and was hospitalized due to severe illness and the medical professionals had given up all hope. He requested Mabit Sahib Zarir to pray. And as a last resort, this was his request. Mabit Sahib told him, you will be healed in 12 days. And the patient who had a background in science felt it was impossible. Thought Mabit Sahib might be out of his mind. Of course not. And to his own amazement, he was sent home on the 12th day and was able to breathe on his own. So when we say in the Atarshnyas that Zarathustra Sahib has dedicated the very breath of his life, it is also important to save the breaths of other people so that we can take common good action. Not about me. Yes, he's also helped heal my mother. So Mohamed Sahib Zarir, thank you Zarir Sahib, has also visited hospitals and ICUs healing people with the blessings and really helping severely ill people. But he has also provided, number one, financial help to heal those in different associations and federations on an individual basis. Food to the hungry, counsel to the mentally disturbed people. So we say good mind and we say the spirit of the Fravashi nurtures nature has or has a nurturing nature. But it's important to actually take action on these to help the minds of people. Number three, different resources for people in need and a liaison between associations and people needing help. So this is another form of communion. Every Sunday, he has streamed his communal prayers, Hambandagi over Zoom, reaching hundreds of Zoroastrians. He has also brought together all the Varada Sturjis on a single platform last year in August. Now, a little background. He has ordained Navar and Martap. Uh, Mohamed Saib Zarir has completed the four-year advanced priestly training, as I mentioned earlier. He is the only priest in North America to perform over 1,200 funeral ceremonies in his 50 years of consecutive priestly practice. And besides rituals, as part of his advanced training, Mohamed Saib Zarir has worked at the Mother Teresa home and has been able to visit old and ailing Mohameds in different villages in Gujarat. He's also a member of the Unity and Diversity World Council representing our Zartoshi faith at interfaith meetings. So it's communion with all faiths <laughs> to spread the messages of Ashur Zarathustra and the Zarathustri Daina. Mohamed Zarir has dedicated his life to human welfare and social issues and giving selfless service to the causes he believes in. 
He's also the represent, rep, rep, recipient of the Jewel of the Community Award through Zoroastrian Children's Day organization in December 2023. We know that Mabit Bhandara lives what he believes. It is because of his love of truth, he has demonstrated the truth of love. And instead of the love of power, he is always focused on the power of love, for which we salute him with the following message from blessings from the high priest, Dastuji Dr. Feroz Kotwal himself, the high priest in Mumbai, who says, and we quote, I wish all success to Zarir and pray to Aura Mazda to bestow his divine blessings on Zarir till the last breath of his life, which we hope is in many decades to come, not any earlier. So one more time, Mabed Zarir exemplifies the Zarthushti idea of a good priest, which is one who nurtures the souls under his care with good thinking in harmony with Asha. And such leadership will help us meet the challenges of the 21st century in a productive way. With that sentiment, may we please welcome our very own Mabed Sahib Zarir Bandara. <coughs> Thank you very much, Karishma, for the wonderful introduction. I'm not sure if I really deserve it or not. In any ways, I will continue with the talk without further ado. Communion. There are quite a few words in Avastan and Pazin. For example, Yazamayde, which means I revere, I show my reverence, and I also attune or connect myself with that particular divinity which I am praying to. Another Pazin word is Hamazor. Hamazori, Hamashobad, Hamazor, Hamashobed, Hamazobim, which means I connect with you in righteousness. Paivan, the connection. How do we connect or imbibe? In order to connect or imbibe or attune, we need to first empty ourselves. We have to make room for good. In the Hormast Kodai, in Kasti prayers, we say, The evil mentality within us be defeated or transformed into goodness. Hence, we have to remove Ariman or evil from within us. There are two words that come in almost all our prayers are Videvo Ahuro Takesho meaning remove the negativity and fill yourself with positivity. Our Kasti ritual is a cleansing ritual, which I compare it to antivirus, virus scan, virus removal program. We run a virus scan on our electronic devices like computer, tablets, mobile phones before downloading or uploading any programs or apps, don't we? Here, I'm not just talking about the physical and external cleansing, but also emotional, spiritual cleansing that is making our hearts and minds pure. Just as we take shower and cleanse our external body, the Kasti ritual cleanses our astral body. After performing the Kasti ritual, the first prayer we recite are the 101 names of Dada Rahura Mazda. That is, we are downloading into this hardware, our body and mind, with the qualities and adjectives of Dada Rahura Mazda himself. By connecting ourselves with the higher consciousness as we recite or chant the Matravani. What is Matravani? Matra to me is man. That is the subconscious mind. And Vani means uttering words. The sound frequencies, vibrations of these uttered words reverberates with the universal electromagnetic frequencies. Hence, when we pray, we need to calm our active minds, getting into a passive, active, meditative state. In Ushtavaiti Gatha, it is called Tushna or Tushnamaiti. 
then pray with such determined focus that you, the subject, and the divinity, the object, and the prayer becomes one. So much so that you become one with the prayer and the divinity, thus creating oneness of tr trinity. You open yourself, become receptive, asking our Mazda to flow through you. Mazda Aura expressed yourself through me. I am open to the flow of your spirit. Fill me up with your energy, so much so that there is no room left for anything that is less than good, that is less than perfect. You become a magnet of goodness. Only the good things come to you. And also, only the good things goes out of you. Thus, you become Dada Aura Mazda's instrument. Now, what we are seeking outside is also present within us. In Atashyansh, the enthroned holy fire is asking the mobile fire, the fire within you. That is, when you visit the fire temple, what has my mobile friend, the fire within you, has brought for me? Meaning, have you performed a lot of good deeds and have come? The enthroned holy fire is the physical manifestation of God, the energy, which is within us and the whole universe. Hence, what we think, speak, and act on an individual basis affects the whole universe as we are as much as part of the universe as the universe is part of us. What are the other ways of making connection? There are many. Physical, touch, visual, sound, light, energies, mantras. Why do we recite the prayers in Avastan? Why can't we just read and understand the translations? Like, for example, instead of reciting a Ashim Vahu prayer, why can't we just say righteousness for the sake of righteousness there lies in true happiness? Doesn't work that way. To me, the meanings are just like top of the iceberg. They are man-made with due respect to my scholarly friends, which can be changed for person's perspective, time, and circumstances. But what remains constant and pure are the prayers itself. The significance of the prayers are in the sound it creates, internally and externally. The sound frequencies, which are immortal, nothing and absolutely nothing can obstruct or destroy it. It can penetrate through mountains and it reaches the spirit world. <clears throat> when you pray or even play the prayer audios in your homes, it brings about good vibrations in your homes. Matravani has the potential to create maximum impact on us by connecting us with the ultimate powerhouse of good energy. This power of the sound of Matravani reverberates with the universe created by Dada Arhura Mansa. Essentially, there are three types of connections. One is the direct or a parallel connection. Connection with God. Either through a medium, a priest, and or other divinities, that is when we pray and or perform rituals. The other one is Siddhi's connection, which is we get together and connect our individual selves, making it a cosmos of collectivity. And the third one is a compound connection, which is a combination of parallel and Siddhi's connection that is coming together and praying together in Hambandagis and or a Ghambar, a Jashans, or any religious get together, where our collective consciousness communes, connects, merges with the infinite energy, the superconscious God, creating oneness of spirituality in humanity. To conclude, I quote from an article, Harmony and Concord, penned by the late revered Dastroji, Dastroji Khrushchev Dabu. I quote, in matters of religious beliefs, there is the possibility that we know nothing for certain. We have no first-hand knowledge of the unseen world. 
we may have interpreted religious injunctions. So it is better to live in concord, even if our beliefs are not common. Barriers of caste, color, sex, and creed would not be inseparable if we respect the views of other people, if we combine and appreciate God's beauty and skill, we have a vast common ground for real worship. Unquote. Zarthushra and his teachings, page 59, by Dastru Kushit as Dabu, MAFTS, High Priest. I thank you all for attending today's session of Bahamata. Remember, you are very valuable, gifted, and talented. And you have a special purpose, a mission in life to fulfill. And with reciting our prayers, with faith in Dada Rahura Mazda, and following the tenets of our religion, you will be very successful spiritually and physically, as we all are spiritual beings in a physical body. Thus, Aura Mazda will exceed your expectations. May it be so as I wish. God bless you all. Thank you very much, respected Mabed Saheb Zareer, for that very powerful message referencing the Atarshnyas, the Gathas as well, indirectly, because we do refer to Ahura Mazda as our friend, our Freya. And as the standing friend, us, the mobile friend, as Ervat Sahib, Mabit Sahib Zareer mentioned, we also refer to the Atarsh as our friend. So with that thought, I'd like to introduce a friend of the community who is building the community through the youth, very importantly for the Youth Congress next year. Our respected Ervat Sahib Xerxes Panthiki. Ervat Sahib Xerxes, it is an honor to introduce you a young, a dynamic, and an awesome Mabad from the United Kingdom, who is serving as the vice chair of the 2023 8th World Zoroastrian Youth Congress in the United Kingdom, which will be held from July 21st to 26th next year. The Congress is also a method of communion. So in the introduction, Baba Meher goes on to say, this Congress aspires to bring our global Zarthushti youth community together to celebrate the spirit of unity within diversity in humanity. Ervad Xerxes Pantaki is a young Zarthushti Mabad from the United Kingdom. He graduated as a chemical engineer and is currently working as a technical business analyst for Investec Bank, a mid-sized global investment bank. During this time, he has worked in data engineering and created models and, a dynamic, main and dynamic maintenance tools, which are used to this day. He then moved into the credit risk IT sector, where he helped to design, implement, and manage a regional credit risk application for the United Kingdom. He's been a competitive swimmer, which grew into the sport of water polo during university and then was appointed treasurer and vice captain. This passion for the sport extended outside of university and he continues to play competitively for Enfield water polo team and the second division London League. Ervid Saib Xerxes is part of the Zoroastrian Youth Committee, helping to organize youth events, including the Digmai Dansak volleyball team that plays in London League. Given their success, he wishes to create more Zoroastrian-based sports teams and events in the future. He finds sport to be a natural icebreaker for friendships to blossom and a great way to catch up with long-distance friends. He feels that there is a sport for everyone. Even those who do not believe, they are athletic. Ervid Saib Xerxes is presently serving as the vice chair of the upcoming 8th World Zoroastrian Youth Congress to be held in July 2023 in London. And the organizing team has been working extremely hard to plan this event for the last three years and ask for your full support to make it a worthwhile experience for the future generation. And we commend Ervid Xerxes and the Congress team for organizing this incredible dedication. With that sentiment, please join me in welcoming our youth leader of today and tomorrow, who represents the youth around the world, 
who as in the Yenge Hakam prayer, we celebrate those of good action. Let us celebrate the youth and their leaders. Over to you, Ervat Sahib, Xerxes Pantaki. Thank you, Dr. Karusha, for that introduction. And thank you to my uncle and uh, Yazdi uncle for creating this global platform and for everyone who's also been working behind the scenes and for inviting me to speak today. Also, thank you to Robert Zahir Bandara for his excellent talk that he just gave a couple of months ago. I would like to talk today about what I believe is the aspects of the praying teaches us and what it signifies in our community. I believe we use the prayers and our time with Abu Ramazda to renew our commitments to him and by continuing to follow his teachings and the pursuits of truth and knowledge in all aspects of life. I also believe that we use this time and his glowing energy to help us subconsciously think about how we wish to resolve any current issues that we have and to also think about how we should prepare and progress for our future goals and our future career. I would like to focus today on Yasna 30, which talks about the eternal contest between the Ignatius centers and Aryaman within us all. And if we focus on Yasna 30 verse 4, which paraphrased says, the followers of deceitful and wicked people shall face the most, the worst mental state, but the followers of the truth and righteousness shall enjoy the best mental state and comfort. This situation shall continue for eternity. This is followed by Yasna 30 verses 5 and 6, which expands upon each side of the contest further, but I would like to highlight an idea from Yasna 30 verse 6, which speaks about evil deeds and how they spread through the world of power, uh, through the world through people. The combination of Yasna 30 verses 4 through 6 are an important pillar to what being as Zarathustra means and where through our, our actions we infect our energies onto our friends, our families, and our local communities, which grow and ripple out even further throughout the world. The energies that we pass on are manifested by our state of mental health, and it is why mental health is so crucial. When we pray, we are reflecting on our thoughts, our words, and our actions with Ahura Master, for he is the only one who truly sees us as our true selves. This further expands upon my previous point, where I believe that he also uses this energy, we, where we also use this energy subconsciously to realign ourselves so that we may only infect positive energies to those around us. It is also mentioned that this contest is eternal and as such is a key, um, is key that we pray consistently and to maintain our best mental health, not only for ourselves, but for those around us who need them when uh, should they need them. Our mental health is, a strong, is strongly influenced by those who we choose to be around us and is why creating our environment to allow our youth to nurture a strong state of mind and choose whom they want to surround themselves with is so critical for the future of our religion. And it is why I've taken up such an active role in helping bring the youth together for, in mainly around London. And mainly this is through sports to create these sort of these opportunities. I, as mentioned by Dr. Krishna earlier, I find that sport helps to prevent people from feeling isolated and show us how strong and resilient we are when we all work together towards the same common goal. Mental health and other topics around um, topics are around creating a better future within our religion for our youth and the environment that we live in will be explored further in the Eighth World, World Zarashi Youth Congress, as mentioned to be held here in London on the 21st to the 26th of July next year. We look forward to seeing those of the youth who wish to attend and to look out um, soon for more information about our registration and the incredible package the rest of the Congress Committee planning team have put together by following our social pages, which I will paste in the comment section below. Thank you, thank you everyone for attending my little talk and thank you Edward uh, Zarin Bandara for explicitly mentioning that here. Thank you Edward Sahib Zerxis Pantaki to you and to your respected parents and those who have guided you through time and to your whole team of the Youth Congress for building this communion through the Congress which you have highlighted reflects upon the messages of the Gathas that Ashok Zarathustra Sahib 
has given us. We thank you for tying this to the gathas so clearly and speaking so from the heart, as it were, and making it resonate with our minds so that we develop a good mind. Thank you. I will now request Mr. Yazdi Tantra to kindly play a message from Mr. Noshir Dadravala. And each of us can read the messages that are coming through chat as well. And I now take the opportunity of requesting each of you to start thinking about how during the next section after the next two speakers, we will be inviting you to share your thoughts in the Vahumana, the good mind section of Vahumata. Thank you, Yazdi Sahib. Hello and good evening, friends. Bahumata is an amazing initiative conceived and curated by Dr. Karishma Koka and supported by community stalwarts in the USA, like my dear friend Meher Amal Saad and my equally dear friend Erwad Zarir Bhandara, who has provided religious services to the community now for 50 years. Zarir, very proud of you. 50 years is a long time. The best years of your life you have devoted in the service of the community. Grateful thanks to you. Uh, what we witness either at Bahumata or in the works of Mehr Amal Saad or Erwad Zari Bhandara, in my opinion, is pure labor of love or selfless community services. In my opinion, it's easy to talk about religion, but it's difficult to making Zoroastrianism a daily way of life in thought, word, or deed. People like Karishma, Meher, and Zarir are role models for us to emulate where it comes to sharing of our time, sharing of our treasure, treasure trove of knowledge, and maintaining the highest standards of ethics and morals. My best wishes to Karishma, Meher and Zarir and to the entire Bahumata team and the great initiative that was conceived and curated by Karishma. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Noshir Dadrawala, well, Karishma and Mami, um, but also thank you to all the parents of everybody around here today, because each one of you makes this communion stronger and possible as we have seen over the years and through the World Zoroastrian Congress, which was just held, which was another example of communion. Now we have a very dynamic young speaker. So the message of Bahumata is to translate the prayers in a way that makes meaning to us, but to also transfer information from the senior to the younger generation. And as I like to think vice versa, because the younger generation are the leaders who bring together all this knowledge in their own minds. So we've had one dynamic young leader and we have a second, Rashna Sarosh Sanjana, who is our youth speaker from India. It is, gives me immense pride and joy in our future generation as we introduce this young, passionate, enterprising <coughs> young lady, a mother who has a passion for giving back to society. And on that note, I'd like to thank all parents and all mothers for their training, their guidance, their empowerment of the youth through their own dedication and service. So Rashna has a passion for giving back to society and to humanity. She is one of the founding members of the World Zarathustra Chamber of Commerce Global Youth Committee and part of the WZCC Mumbai. Rashna Sanjana started her career working in India and the Middle East to consult with major global FMCG brands. Rashna, I don't know what FMCG stands for, so please let us know later. On sales and brand strategy. Armed with an MBA at INSEAD, she then went on to co-found Stitch My Fit, a tailor solution for customized manufacturing, which now exports to businesses internationally. Her passion lies in giving back to society through her strengths. She has built a curriculum and conducted courses at the National Association for the Blind for over two years, 
teaching the visually impaired students the basics of conducting a business. She's also convened and hosted the first Tiger's Den at the 2019 7th World Zoroastrian Congress in Los Angeles, and once again at the 2020 Global WZCC Conclave in India, with over 400,000 US dollars invested into young startups. We give you and the WZCC credit for this. Thank you. She's also one of the founding members of the WZCC Global Youth Committee and part of the WZCC Mumbai chapter. Rushna has also recently founded the Play Project in association with NGOs to live, to give, and Muktagan, which strives to create a network of educational toys to be collected, curated into a toy library for underprivileged children in municipal schools in Mumbai. That is a remarkable achievement towards serving humanity, truly. Although she does not see herself to be very religious, she truly believes that the Zoroastrian ethos behind life and hopes that she is able to dedicate more time towards making this world a better place through good thoughts, good words, and good deeds. So with that example, with several examples of communion in religion, the WZCC, the youth work, empowering others to give of their toys. Toys could represent not only toys, but even the gift of the mind that we give to others. We thank you and invite you to share your good mind with us. Thank you, Dr. Karishma, for such a lovely introduction. And thank you to everyone who is giving us this platform to really you know, share our journey. Um, I would like to begin by sharing how the basis of communion and religion has really been nurtured and structured in my life and how this spirit of uh, Hamazuri has built the essence of um, caring or sharing in me or in others around me. So um, just to give you a little background about myself, I was born into a very religious family, you know, both of our um, sides were priestly families and had every sort of faith in God. So my father's side was actually the Sinjana priests from Sinjan, and my mother's side hailed from the Kotwal priests. So growing up in religion, uh, growing up, religion was really entwined into our everyday life. Um, so although my grandmother would really never let me sit down when we heard the boy at the Agari and was a devout Zarashan, it was really my father who instilled the ethos and values of Zarashanism that which withholds within me right now. So as children, more than reading about prayers, my father told me the stories about the Parsis coming to India. And just as we truly added sugar to the milk of India, it was upon us to sweeten the world around us. So we used to read books about Zoroastrianism, which focused on the purpose of good words, good thoughts, good deeds. And he never really was concerned about how strictly I followed religious practices, but was more focused in the manner that I conducted myself ethically and morally. I, in fact, saw my father enact this firsthand. He had a very disciplined approach to telling the truth, no matter what, and giving back with whatever little he had. I never saw him talk uh, ill intentionally of someone or do something with a bad purpose. So although he has passed away, I think um, his fundamental Zoroastrian way of living remains entwined within me through our culture and religion. Um, just to share something a little personal, I went through a tough period in my life where two members of my family passed away in a very short time. And I think this was a bridge in my life is when I realized that the time we spend here is so valuable. And I truly believe that if we are here even for a little time, there's only to be happy and make others' lives beautiful through our good energy, thoughts and deeds. So over the last um, five years, um, I decided to get involved, as you had mentioned, with the community and give back as much as possible, um, as giving back through the community is just a great starting point. At the World's Ration Chamber of Commerce, um, at the, as the India Youth Lead, we've been very actively involved in helping young entrepreneurs and, pro and professionals reach their potential through mentoring and funding activities. So the Tigers Den that you had mentioned, like you said, generated about 400K USD in equity investment. We, here we bring together um, young entrepreneurs who display their businesses to um, Zoroastrian investors and they potentially join forces to build and grow them. 
So amongst this, not only have we um, brought in, you know, investment, but we've also helped numerous businesses which have been assigned mentors who are industry stalwarts who provide great value in growing businesses. Um, during the lockdown, I thought we, it was very important to give back to people who were in need. So we even started a Jobs for All program, which connects job seekers and those who lost their jobs in the pandemic for potential employment opportunities. So this was a big thing and people were very, very um, um, happy that we had started something like this. Um, this. This was a very enterprising start with the WZCC and really pushed me to volunteer more. So like I, I started teaching um, a business for the visually impaired at the National Association for the Blind, which in itself was just such an enlightening and eye-opening experience. And to be honest, I almost felt like giving back had become addictive. So uh, like you said, you know, just this year, I founded uh, the Play Project, which helps people not only give back their toys, but it really gives them a sense of um, adding to the ecosystem of uh, good. Um, so I know that, I mean, if I have a little advice to give, it would be, um, I think it is difficult to give back when you are young and running your own business and trying to take care of a new family. Um, but it's the reason that I tell a lot of uh, you that you need to not only set aside time for activities that are purely focused on this, but also entwine this Zurashan ethos into the way you treat your employees, your friends, your family, and sometimes even strangers who may have nothing to give you back in return. So I firmly believe that giving back to humanity um, through the spirit and nurture the spirit of Homazuri through the through good thoughts, good words, and good deeds is most essential. And I wouldn't have embarked on any of these fulfilling missions had it not been for my father, who spoke so highly of Zorashtrians worldwide, doing better for humanity. And it has been ingrained into all of us. And I thank and I truly love this beautiful community for that. Um, after following all these speakers, I know it seems like I have a really long way to go. Uh, but I'm really, truly inspired by all of you to continue this journey that I've started quite relentlessly, not only to grow myself spiritually, but also to create a universe of good around me. So thank you, everybody, for listening to me. And thank you, Dr. Karishma and Baba Meher for giving me this platform to share my journey with all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rashna, for sharing your thoughts with us. And I'd like to end with the last paragraph Baba Meher has written in your biography, which is that you believe that without properly allocating a scheduled time to give back, it gets difficult to manage our lives in the forefront. Therefore, you recommend that everyone start a small, start small and just dedicate even an hour of one's week to think about how we can make a small difference in the lives of others, no matter how big or small. With that wise piece of advice and that special wisdom, we thank you for your time here today and your continued work in the community. Thank you. And thank you, Baba Mahir, for writing our biographies. So we've seen communion in different ways. As we say at the end of the Hoshbam, um, let me come closer to Ahura Mazda. Let me see you closely. A person who has actually made that possible is Dr. and Professor Farzane Goshtaz from Iran, our next Bahumata speaker. It gives me immense pride and joy to introduce this iconic, this multifaceted and incredibly dedicated, amazingly talented Zartoshti lady from our motherland, Iran, who has contributed towards the betterment of our community as well as the betterment of humanity for over 30 years. Dr. Farzane Goshtas received her first master's degree in physiotherapy from the University of Tehran, and she continued her education <clears throat> in ancient Iranian languages and culture by gaining the second rank and entrance exam and finishing her master's degree at the University of Tehran, then obtaining a PhD at the Institute for Humanities and Cultural Studies again with the second rank right at the top. And she became a faculty member for Institute of Humanities and Cultural Studies from the year 2010. Since 2016, she has also been the head of the ancient Iranian 
Language and Culture Department. I'll take a break from the written biography at this moment and bring to our attention that she is the respected wife of a very respected Mabid Sahib in Iran. And our, in India, we call them Goranis with respect. But these ladies actually help the preservation of the Zoroastrian traditions through time. And we give them a huge salute of appreciation around the world. Maybe people don't know, but they often have to wake up at 3.30 in the morning to start the preparations for the priest and the agyari, which may take place maybe two hours later, maybe more. The wives of the These priest. are the wives of the respected Mabed Sahibs, the priests. Okay, with that thought, as we think about them and give gratitude, I will continue with this introduction. So Dr. Farzane Goshtat became a faculty member for the Institute of Humanities and Cultural Studies from the year 2010 serving as the head of the Languages and Culture Department and has published eight scientifically approved books and more than 50 papers in various fields of cultural and linguistic studies in several journals and encyclopedia. In 2011, she authored three books for the religious education of Zoroastrian students in high school, which were regarded as official books for national study and exams. And this was in cooperation with the Council of Iranian Mabids and other researchers, the Tistar Yasht, the admonitions of Osner Dana and Azar Kaiwan and the account of his life, writings and belief are among the several other important books authored by her. In the book, The Religions of Ancient Iran, she worked on Zarathustra, the part on Zarathustra, under the guidance and collaboration of the legendary doctor and professor Ketayun Mazdapur. Bahumata gives honor to all the teachers of the respected people of knowledge in the world. And we give our gratitude to Dr. Mazdapur. In 2016, this book won the De Deh Koda Award, the chosen book for all faculty members of all universities of Iran. One of her other books, the Farhangi Oim Evak, the oldest bilingual Iranian dictionary, won Palmary Awards in the 36th Iranian Book of the Year Awards. She also won multiple awards for best researcher at the Institute of Humanities and Cultural Studies, the IHCS in 2011, 15, 17, and 18. She has also been very active as a social cultural activist throughout her life. Now, a little about her early years. She was an integral part of the Zoroastrian Student Union, the KZ, KDZ, while studying at the university. And with the help of other students, the concept of Hamazori, she started the Matra, a competition between people of all ages in reading Avastan Gathas and also research papers in different fields of humanity studies for better understanding of the words of Ashur Zarathustra and the Gathas, as well as the Avasta. She served as the manager and coordinator for the first three Mantra competitions beginning in 1994. It is vital to note that this amazing contest is still going strong within our younger generation and is growing bigger and stronger every year among the Zoroastrian Student Association in Iran in the form of competition as well as conferences about Zoroastrian religion. This year, it was the 28th Matravan and even with the pandemic, it was the largest Zoroastrian <laughs> gathering with presentations <laughs> focused on religion in Iran. A hats off to you, Dr. Farzane Goshtas, for accomplishing this amazing feat for our Zarthoshi community in Iran. In the following years, she devoted her life towards education of our future generation of students by starting Improving Education in Zoroastrian Schools, a program which started in 2009 in which she teamed up with some of the best teachers of Iran and gathered students every weekend to improve their education and to help them become more familiar with the process of scientific research and other related things. By the grace of our Mazda, this program is still going strong in Iran under her able blessings. In the same year, she also organized three Zoroastrian gambars. So the concept of the gambar is also a communion during which 50, more than 50 students, mostly in elementary school, performed a big gambar all by themselves in conjunction with several other fun-related social activities like performing plays. 
through this special project, not only did she intend to make children more interested in society and religion, but also taught them the value of how to manage big projects. Because in the past, the managers and coordination, coordinators of Gambars were mainly children. And she guided them through this process to reestablish that trend within the fabric of the Zartoshti community of Iran. An example of preservation of the Zartoshti Daina. <coughs> These events served as one of the most important educational projects in those years by Zoroastrian people. And although the event did not continue in its original form, many similar events followed in other cities like Yazd with the same goal, purpose, and insight. Dr. Professor Farzane Goshtasp also served as the inspector of the Council of Iranian Mabeds for four years, in which she initiated several projects such as co-thinking and unison of Mabeds and people teaching Dine Dabire, the script in which Avastan is written, in elementary schools, the cultural atlas of Zoroastrian locations. This is very important. This atlas won the major project that was focused on scientific recordings, each and every location that belongs to or was related to Zoroastrians all across Iran. For several years, she traveled to many accessible and inaccessible locations of Iran and recorded these specific locations. We give you our deepest gratitude, Dr. Goshasp. In 2010, she and her husband, Mabed Pedram Soshapur, presented a special proposal to the Council of Iranian Mabeds for acknowledging female Mabed Yars. And with their ardent help, the first female Mabed Yars were introduced in Esfandagan of 2011. So Esfandagan is the, celebrated as the day of mothers, the day of earth, and therefore the day of knowledge indirectly, because mothers give us our knowledge. The earth gives us our knowledge. In 2012, with the help of legendary Dr. Ketayun Mazdapur and Dr. Esfandiar Ek Tiyari, a member of the Parliament of Iran, they started Yadegar Bastan, the research institution with a formal warrant from the Ministry of Science, Research and Technology in Iran. Since 2017, she is also the head of the Frabahar publication, which publishes several important and noteworthy books, articles pertaining to Zarthoshi religion, culture, and history, as well as the history and culture of our motherland Iran. The Frabahar journal and magazine is the oldest Zarthoshi publication in Iran for the last 50 years. It is really important to record things not only in the oral tradition, but in writing, and now, of course, through things like the international Zoom recordings. In 2020, she started Nishane Faref Vahar, the symbol of the Fravahar, award under the support of the Fravahar publications to encourage young researchers by giving them awards for the best master's degree and PhD thesis about Zarathustra and Zoroastrians, as well as the Iranian culture and history. The first award was held on February the 19th, 2021. And this year, this award ceremony took place on 14th of March under her able guidance. How many different things you have done to ensure that the messages of Asho Zarathustra and the Zarathustri Daina conserved and transmitted, not just conserved, but transmitted on. In 2019, she started working on this major project focused on gathering a database of old Middle Persian texts. A similar project was initiated before under the directorship of Professor Shol Shaked in Israel Academy of Sciences and Humanities. Although after 15 years, it didn't bear fruit. So it is important to continue that work for which we thank you. But with her hard work and dedication, Parsig database was officially launched in December of 2020 as the world's first publicly accessed scientific database of Middle Persian texts and translation of more than 60,000 words at the time of its launch. And this is the website, which I will paste in the chat box a little later. So this database, Parsig, which makes all Middle Persian terms and their corresponding linguistic information available to researchers, records information on every single term in a text, the term in its original written transcript, its transliteration, its transcription, its translation, all aspects. Who's Varez or Arame Goram, Arame, Arame Gram? the lexical, syntactical, and structural analysis, <clears throat> lemma, and source of references are all recorded. An example of this has been given here. 
For verbs, the analysis goes 12 layers deep, each layer marked with a specific tag. Farsig provides its users with various search and reporting methods based on this diverse set of information. And as we all know, research into Zoroastrianism, which is a word coined in 1874, if I remember right, um, by a visitor to India, what we call the Zarthushti Daina. This research is increasing with time with a lot of investment. So instead of reinventing the wheel, here is a resource that gives you all the details. Middle Persian is also known as Pahlavi and is found in various scripts, inscriptions, book, the Manchinian and Christian, reflecting several dialects. Middle Persian sources cover vast geographic areas from Central Asia and Iran to Egypt. And dated from the 3rd to the 11th century AD, these resources come in diverse forms, as Baba Meher has written here. Inscriptions, books, papyri, coins, seals, loan words, and other neighboring languages, such as Syriac and Babylonian um, Aramaic. So this language, Middle Persian, was the main language of the Sasanian Empire, Manichaeism, Eastern Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Therefore, history, administration, legal systems, and folklore, geography, and other, every subject related to Central and Western Asia during this time period was in use, that was in use, is related to the study. Therefore, studying is crucially important. And this source material from the period needs to be studied and requires a text corpus and a dictionary, neither of which are yet available in a comprehensive form. So currently scholars rely on a number of separate, concise dictionaries of Zoroastrian, inscription, and Manichaean Middle Persian. And through the Parsic database, a comprehensive Middle Persian corpus is being prepared. For all this research, Baba Meher, I give you immense gratitude. And for writing this biography, thank you very much. The construction and formation of this database started in 2019 and was launched in 2020, December. Therefore, this ongoing project, Parsig, has constantly been and still adding more information of every Middle Persian text to establish a complete, a straightforward, and a detailed corpus of all the Middle Persian texts available. It's non-profit. And most of its expenditure for maintaining the website and completing the database has been borne through personal funds. Therefore, it's of vital importance that the database is available to all for free. Finally, the importance of such a big project cannot be emphasized enough. Besides, there are not too many researchers in the field, so that these projects are generally very hard to materialize, especially when having a small team, minimal support, and having financial challenges, and being in Iran. Therefore, the project makes this Middle Persian language and other languages alive and makes the culture and history of a motherland available to everyone. It's also flexible and can become a platform for similar research. The corpus now has 33 Zoroastrian books from Middle Persian texts and all the private inscriptions of the Sasanian and post-Sasanian eras, over 90 inscriptions. Also, kudos and gratitude to all those archaeologists who have made this available to us, traveled around the world in excruciating circumstances, and those people who have supported all this research over time. Thank you all. So the total number of words is about 66,000 for the text and 8,100 8, from the lemata, the words excluding repetition and frequency. Ultimately, Parsig will include and process all MP texts, the remaining texts exceeding 500,000 words. Our hats off to you, Dr. Professor Farzani Goshtasp, and much gratitude, Baba Meher, for your research. Thank you for your incredible dedication. With that sentiment, may we please welcome Dr. Farzane Goshtas and give credit to her whole team. So the spirit of communion is also credit to the entire team and those people who have come before us. So yes, now 51.22, from which the Yenge Hata mistaken, says we give gratitude not only to those people of good action living, which is what the Yenge Hatam says, but 51.22 says we give gratitude to those of people who have passed away as well, their Ravan. Over to you, Dr. So bad. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, dear Karishma, for your introduction. Um, and um, I, would like to, uh, I would like to first express uh, my deep gratitude uh, to Dr. Karishma Koka and uh, Baba Meher for planning and executing 
uh, this very special global webinar of Bahumata and for inviting me um, to this event as a speaker from Iran. Uh, in, in, in Zoroastrian tradition, uh, we have a very important and familiar expression um, for communion in the meaning of unity and alliance. Uh, it is Hamazuri. The first uh, part of this expression is Hamag, which in Pahlavi means all, whole. And uh, the second part is Zor, which uh, doesn't mean Zor in Persian or power, but it is cognate with Avestan Zaosra. Uh, meaning libation, offering, or dedication. Uh, Hamazuri indicates unity of the prayers uh, when they perform a religious ceremony like Jashan's, Gahambar's, or Noru's. It is a very old concept which has su survived uh, from the ancient times and is uh, preserved by now. It is uh, for this reason that we do all of our rituals as being united together in body, mind, and the spirit. This concept is in the case in different Pahlavi texts, such as Nirangistan, paragraph 30 and 32 of the second volume, and paragraph 62 and 182 uh, of the third volume edition of Kotwal and Krembrook. In this presentation, I want to, I, I want to indicate uh, two fundamental questions. Why is Hamazuri so important in the Zoroastrian text? And why our society need it? in the contra contemporary time. Uh, unity, uh, unity and Hamazuri of uh, Zoroastrians uh, in, the per in the performing of rituals reminds us the unity in all part of the creation and the alliance of human being with the universe. The symbol and uh, sign of solidarity in our rituals is the sofre, table close. In, uh, in which uh, there is an inherent sign uh, for each creation, sky, water, earth, plants, animals, men, and fire, which are placed next, next to each other. These rituals, uh, the spreading of the, um, of the sofre and performing yazir ceremony are a symbol of what happened at the inception of creation. In the Afringani Gahambar, we read that uh, when Ahura Mazda uh, created each of the creations, he performed Yazesh and Devot Miyaz to commemorate that creation. And in the same way, human, humans should also perform Yazesh and Devot Miyaz during the time of Gahambar. This is the responsibility of all Zoroastrians as a united community in the spirit of unity. So that the Zoroastrian solidarity with each other can create a powerful ritual uh, full of uh, blessings and happiness by repeating the prayers of Ahura Mazda and the Yazatas. Apart from uh, praising and honoring all of universe existence, uh, there is another aspect in the rites and ceremonies of Hamazuri, which is Sepas Kozari, gratitude. In a Pahlavi text called Suri Sahwan, Banquet Speech, which is uh, similar to offering on, or, uh, which is similar to offering or Hamazur prayer in the Khordavesta, the text begins with gratitude, azadi guftan in Pahlavi. And in, in paragraph 18, it is, is stated that there is nothing more important and higher than gratitude. In the same text, in paragraph 15, the text uh, refers to the Avesta and mentions that uh, when the people praise the Ahura Mazda together and invoke the blessings of Yazata, everything will be better. Therefore, the joy, blessing, and happiness to, uh, of the entire existence will, will be established when all of us respect the creation and give thanks to Ahura Mazda as one. When we, when we repeat together, Hamazurbin, Hamazur, Hama Ashubin. So if the question comes why, um, then the answer is because in Zoroastrian religion, all creation is alive and uh, they all belong to one body. They all are parts of the same whole. One is all and all is one. Everything comes uh, from the same Ahuraic origin. The joy and happiness of whole existence is obtained when every being is happy and with the illness and sadness of 
each of them, the existence becomes sad and sick. Now that the Russians are scattered in different parts of the world, in my opinion, reviving the very old tradition of Hamazuri with two goals in mind, respect for existence and gratitude, is the secret of survival and prosperity of the society. In my opinion, Gahambar are the most important ceremonies for starting the path of solidarity. For years, I've had uh, an idea and proposal for the world uh, uh, Zartush, this community uh, that can spread this uh, harmony in the whole world and among our Zoroastrians, regardless of borders. And uh, I have raised this, uh, this idea in uh, different meetings. Today, I want to share it with you uh, who are from different um, corners of the world. As I said before, Gahambars and Nurus are uh, are the celebration of seven gods creation. My suggestion is that Zoroastrian organize festivals to, com uh, to commemorate each of these divine creations during each Gahambars. A festival that are in harmony with our world today and bring joy, glory, and honor to our society. Uh, for example, in Gahambar Meiduzarem, it can be celebrated the festival of sky and clean air. In Gahambar Meidushan, the festival of importance and caring of water. And in Gahambar Petushan, the festival of caring the airs, and so on. This is a modern and advanced thought in accordance with the needs of uh, today's world and based on the teaching of Ashuzardusht. Hamazur prayer um, can be recited on the first day by all the Zardushtis uh, together all around the world and then plan some programs uh, which are related to the water, for example, uh, focusing on its importance and caring and keep it in clean. Uh, a single global website can be created with the collective help and support of all Zoroastrian organizations to hold this seven uh, festival simultaneously and united all over the world so that all Zoroastrians, um, wherever they are, can share their programs with each other. Especially uh, the presence of children and teenagers and encouraging them to do uh, various programs such as competition, painting, sports, etc., is very important. Uh, we implemented um, small examples of um, this idea as well as in students' Kahabar in Iran. But, uh, but I believe that um, what causes this uh, glory and continuity of this program is the cooperation of all Zardushtis all over the world. Um, I hope and at the end, I hope that the result of this cooperation will bring joy, blessing and spiritual power uh, to the Zoroastrian community. Hamazur bim, hamazur hamashu bim, hamazur vish kerfa bim, ham kerfe kerfa karamim. Thank you and uh, may Ahura Mazda be with you all. Thank you, Karishma. Hamazurbim, thank you very much, Dr. Farsane Goshtas, for your work and for your talk today. With that, we come to the end of the official talks today. I'd like to thank Mr. Meher Amalsad for the detailed biographies. They're also available on the website. And I've just noticed that Mr. Saroj J. Collector's little doll is with us on the Zoom program. So there is an example of transmission of information and encouraging the young leader of tomorrow, hello darling, to be present in Hamazori with the global Zarthushti participants of Hamazori. If she would like to say something, Mr. Collector, or you would like to say something, please unmute yourself. Okay. Um, yes, this is my little granddaughter. We have a few more uh, who are not in Houston right now. Um, I had a question for Edward Bandara. Um, I haven't noticed this much in the United States. People keep quiet while the jashan is going on or any of the other uh -huh. prayers are going on. Uh, rituals are going on, but in 
Pakistan, where I grew up, you know, while it's taking place, they're talking away about something else and not concentrating on what is going on. Um, I grew up, even though I'm not from, from an Osla family, I grew up with a uh, high priest of one of the Agyaris there. And he's my, he was my, what I call my second grandfather. Uh, and uh, he, did, he literally raised me. And I had a lot of background. And like you say, you know, uh, you learn from them, you listen to them. Uh, we used to walk with him to the Agyari and on a daily basis. If I didn't go there for pr to pray, I would get called upon. So. What I'm asking is that why is it that the Airwoods, before sitting down for the Jashan, tell people what prayers are going to be prayed in that particular thing, so that at least some of them will open up a book and follow. They may not understand them, but if they open the book and follow it with you, uh, Hopefully one day they'll open up and find the meanings of it. And by the way, thank you for coming to Houston and giving us such a great talk over there for the three days that you were there. I enjoyed it tremendously. And I enjoyed meeting your son at the uh, opening. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, is, Mr. Collector. Please, Sarosh. Yes. Sarosh. I had the pleasure of meeting you. I remember you had come for the Vandirat uh, Sade ritual and you were there for the whole night. Thank you. Yes. And it was really a pleasure and honor meeting you. To answer your question, yes, that's a wonderful question. Uh, yeah. And I ask a lot of people that anytime ever, if you have bought a Are you done talking to them? of an opera, or any show, say $300, $400, and you go for that show, and then you turn on your iPhone and start watching something else on YouTube? Have you ever done that? And the answer is definitely no. Then how come when you come for the prayers, Jashin or Gambar prayers, you are, or even when you're getting some ceremony done for your dear departed ones, you open, the Kordiyavas time, you start saying some, something else, some other prayers. Your priest is trying to make a connection. He's a medium between the spirit world and you. Especially when we are doing the prayers for your dear departed ones. Here he's making a contact. Your dear departed ones' energies are trying to make contact with you, but you are busy saying some other prayers. So what we have done at Zach, we have published the books from NAMC about, uh, those are for gestures and rituals, and we distribute them at times, and we tell them what prayers are we have, what prayers we are going to pray. So then there is a Hamazori, we are all praying the same prayers. And that was the tradition, everybody were praying the same prayers. That sometimes the tradition continues and some parts go away. And that is the reason why we have this. And also, very rightly, you said that people come for the prayers and then they talk and talk. And they are there physically, but spiritually and mentally, they are not present. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. J a collector, we can't actually hear you. One moment, you're muted. We can't actually hear you. Could you unmute again? Um, I used to teach the youth before I got sick. And um, every time at a Jashan or a Gambar, I would end up, I had slides made up of all the prayers that were going to be done in there. So I'd go find out, make sure that I had the right prayers and I put it up there. And the youth would end up participating, you know, when you have the, Atravakshi prayer, we had the youth participating in there, praying along, doing the 12 Atavarios and so on and so forth. And uh, 
the adults asked me, what are you doing? I said, I'm making them participate. And uh, so they said, well, we'd like to do that too. I said, fine. So the next time round, I gave them the, the, the PowerPoint and I gave them the, uh, the, 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 the entire uh, uh, prayer. And I'd highlight it. This is what you need to be doing with. Um, after one time of doing it, he says, this is crazy, making us stand up and do the Atravashyanta. I said, who told you to stand up? Sit there, but participate in it. This is what we are doing. So, and I just, and, and that stopped. And, you know, I just wish um, through the NAMC, you get all the other Airwoods to say, hey, this is what we're going to do. Here's the book. We have the book. At the, at the center, uh, but you know, it's something that has been bothering me for so long as to how do you get people to participate in that? You know, we talk about communion. This is part of a communion, and it's a difficult time. So I'm, I'm looking for an answer. Thank you, Mr. Collect, I mean, for that question. And um, I suppose this is a good time to give gratitude to all the associations around the world who have made helped our priests to reach out over Zoom to the worldwide community. So Fazana has done this, the ZTFE has done it, Mabit Sahib Zarir has been doing it. Um, Ervad Dr. Ramyar Karanjia has been having Zoom sessions right through COVID and giving um, texts as well through email of the prayers. For example, our local Ervat Sahib Yazad Bhada of the ZTFE gives out the full details of the Hambandagi prayers in an email. So thank you for that idea, and it's a brilliant idea. I'd like to now request all those who have further questions for our respected speakers to start putting your digital hands up while I start with the chat box. And then we will have our Bahumana sharing section where we request you to put your digital hand up and share your experiences with your agyaris, your dasturjis, your childhood experiences, whatever you would like to share with us so that we understand how good actions, good thoughts, the word bahumata means with good thoughts, can actually be inspired by the messages of the Masdiyasni Zarathushti Dain. Mr. Kai Dotiwala, please go ahead. Thank you, Yazdi, for sparking the <coughs> Mr. Dotiwala, please go ahead. You're unmuted, go ahead. Maybe if you unplug your microphone from the computer and just use the computer speaker. Yes, All I can right. hear you. Can you hear me yeah. now? Okay, great. So uh, my question is not directly related to what we were uh, talking about today, but indirectly related. Yesterday, we observed Fravadin Maino and Fravadin Roj, which technically is that our, our Fravashis are finally going back to their heavenly abodes, uh, at least for this time period. Well, on the early morning of the fourth day, we are saying the same thing to our young Zarathustis that the Fravashis are going up to their heavenly abodes. So at what stage are they really going up to their heavenly abode? Or is it something where they are traveling on the fourth morning and then till Fravadin Vainu and Fravadin Roj, they are finally reaching their destination because of the distance. Can you throw some light on that issue if you don't mind? So if I may, may I put this question to our senior Mabit Sahib Zareer Bhandara for you? Is that okay? I, that, I thought that's who I was talking to. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Yes, that's right. Yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Dotiwala, for asking this question. Just call me Kramers. That's fine, please. Kramers. Yes. Um, many a times we try to decipher the spirituality or the technicalities of spirituality with our mind. What we have, what we're conditioned with. Like, you know, when we say spiritual, 
uh, spiritual beings or spiritual. It's somewhere out there, right. like geographical region. Whereas spirituality and physical aspect are together. It's when we connect ourselves, when we come into that frequency, we are making that connection. They are always there. But during the last 10 days of our year, Muktad, the, the Panji, Panji May, those, those days are spatially specified for that particular time, which is like a holiday for them. So that is the time we believe that they are with us, but they are with us all the time. All we need to do is prayers and meditate and connect with them. We can connect with them every day. Thank you. But then what about the Fravadin Maina and Fravadin Roj? Why the difference? Fravadin Maina, like it's Fravashi. Fravashi, okay. Fravahar. And Fravadin Maina and Fravadin Roj and Fravashi, when we talk about Fravadin, Fravashi, the first thing that comes to our mind are the Hama chauffeurs. But there is also our own Fravashi, the spiritual part, the counterpart of man in the spirit world, who is our guardian angel. Fravashis are the divinities who help Dada Rauramas that they come after Yazan and, Yaz and, Yaz and Amshaspans as the co workers of this universe. And Farvandin Mainu and Farvandin Roach is dedicated to all the Fravashis of the world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mabit Saib Zari. So this was, this was um, in direct answer to the reference to Yasna 51.22 that I mentioned earlier, from which the Yenge Hatam is supposed to have been paraphrased. Mabit Saib Zari, would you like to comment on the 51.22 before we take the next question? The, the Yenge Hatam prayer with Yatha, Huvayo, and Ashimwo are the oldest and most powerful prayers. And Yangya Hatam prayer is, a, is the ex excellent example of Amazuri, not just with the living beings, but beings who were there before us, who are with us today, and who are going to come in future. So how about we chant the Yangya Hatam prayer together? <clears throat> Yange hata ah yasane paiti vango masrao huro vaitha shakacha Yangamcha Tasha Tausha Yazamangde. So we commune with all the good souls of men and women who were there in the past, who are in present, and the future ones. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Arvat Saib Zari. Thank you for that lovely question, Mr. Dotiwala. Please, everyone who would like to ask a question, just raise your digital hand as I've written in the chat, and Mr. Yajdi Tantra will be able to find you and help you unmute so you can ask your own question or make a comment of your choice to share the messages of the Zarathustra Daina and Spitama Asho Zarathustra Sahib. I'll start taking some questions from the chat or some comments. Um, Rukshana, auntie, if you'd like to unmute yourself, please raise your digital hand. Auntie Rukshana says, Ervad Zarir and his, I'll just keep watching out for you having raised your hand and then stop and allow you to continue yourself. Ervad Zarir and his son Xerxes, which is Ervad Sahib Xerxes, are the biggest blessings to our community. We are fortunate to have him near us and participate with him in all prayers and hambandagis. He has helped my family. This is Rukshana who's saying this. He has helped my family in so many ways. He's been a pillar of support in our tough times. Daily, I pray to Dada Rahul Ramazda to bless him and his family because Ervid Zarir and his family deserves it. Thank you, Zarir and Xerxes. I paraphrase that as Ervid Sahib, Zarir and Ervid Sahib Xerxes for everything you both have done and are doing for our community. We have a message from Jale and Rukshana Majri, 
who second that, Bero Shroff, who thirds it, Kushru Mirza Saheb, if you'd like to put your hand up and um, say something about the Makravani, please go ahead. Nina, who also thanks Sarvad Zareer. We have a message from Mr. Jangir Saroj, who has started Conversations Across Beliefs, a program, again, of Hamazori and Communion. Please go ahead, Mr. Jangir Saroj and his wife, Irma Saroj. You'll need to unmute, please. We're waiting for you to unmute. In that time, I'll just read out Banu's message. Banu, if you're here, please raise your hand. As soon as you unmute, uh, Jangir, Yazdi will spotlight you, so I'll know you've been unmuted. Ah, there you are. Go ahead. Ah, sorry, but I wasn't allowed to unmute, so here we are. Thank you very much. <clears throat> A lot has been spoken about uh, communion. Jangir, and... we can't actually see you. Could you come closer to Irma? There's an, a, a reason to come closer to Irma <laughs> in public view. <laughs> okay. We have been speaking about communion and uh, Zareer has beautifully reminded us that one needs to commune with one's inner self. And I am wondering uh, as to why I'm 84 years old and I was never told as a Zoroastrian how to commune with myself or what my inner self is. So my question at this moment would be more directed to the wonderful young people we, we have here as to how they see the inner self and what assistance or guidance is given by our Ervat sides and others to be able to commune. One of the things that has come across to me by hearing various individuals is that the training given to our MOBEDs, that is an important training for them to be able to connect with themselves, the inner self, the light within, and how can that be shared with uh, the laity? That would be my question. And how would the young people like on the committee at the moment or, or on the Zoom at the moment would like to receive this? Thank you. Thank you, Jangir. You've highlighted the importance of knowing ourselves or knowing oneself the concept of conscience or the baudang and in effectively the yasna 30.2 which says listen before reflecting and deciding so listen to others listen to our inner self so we'd like to honor you by asking this question first to our young priest and our young leader rashna servat sahib zerxis rashna if either of you or both of you would like to comment upon this please come in unmute yourselves and then speak. And then we'd like to take this to our other youth or children who might be on this program and ask you to raise your hand so Mr. Yajdi Tantra can find you and help you unmute. And then all the other young people who are here, all of you young people who are here, we'd like all of you to come in when you want to. And then we'd like to request our very young, very dynamic, respected Mabit Sahib Zareer Bhandara to give his answer at the end of that dialogue. Um, Ervat Saheb Zerxis Pantaki, may we hand over to you if you'd like to take the question first? Thank you very much. Sure. So, the way I see it is that the training that we've received is just a mere tool um, to uh, allow ourselves to connect closer uh, to our home, and the other. Uh, spirits and the way that the and, and all of the information comes from our elders it is passed down through 
teachings through conversations and that is something that i think needs to happen more with our youth and that is starting to happen more within our youth as, as dr krishna mentioned there are many organizations that are now helping to start facilitate these conversations i think that is the way that this will engage in the youth and that is the way that how it will be and i believe how it will be passed out as it has done before uh, and that is i think the true way that, that we need to spread these messages and pass it down to our youth Thank you, Arvind Sahib Zaksis Panthaki, and for passing this down to you. We thank your respected parents and elders as well. And for passing it down to others, we thank you. Um, Rashna, would you like to please come in? So I um, agree with um, Arvind Zaksis, who said, you know, that um, A, it's actually a very uh, sort of individualistic journey. It, um, especially, I mean, if I can speak from India, um, you don't have a lot of access to uh, youth morbids or people who are giving, um, you know, lectures or seminars or just connecting with the youth on this basis. Um, so I think it's, um, it's a, I wouldn't say a responsibility, but it's an opportunity for youth morbids to connect with the youth in a very different way that the, than the elderly morbids have. Um, there is a spirit of basically uh, communion and sort of community that you can take advantage of. And it doesn't have to be um, set in a very religious way. But I think if we hold more community sort of um, events where this is spoken about a little more, uh, which we don't have access to right now, at least in India, uh, for whatever reason, I feel that there is a bigger sense of community elsewhere in the US where actually the population is less, right? So I think the youth mobeds um, can really play a great role in sort of instilling this conversation <clears throat> or starting off this conversation, which otherwise you wouldn't hear anywhere else. Um, and Rashna, the question that Jangir Sarosh, Mr. Jangir Sarosh asked about the knowing the inner uh, self or listening to the inner voice, you have a little daughter. And yes. As uh, Baba Meher has repeatedly said, he learns from his little grandchild. Oh, my. I'm very blessed right? to be, um, listen to by my grandfather, Ervat Saheb Nashirbanji Pesanji Pantaki, who helped me listen to the inner voice. And protected that inner voice by protecting me even externally. So how do you listen or help a person listen to the inner voice? And how I would put to you as a mother, do you protect that inner voice as the child grows up? If I could have your insight on that, please. So, um, I mean, I read this somewhere recently that uh, being a mother or being a parent, actually, um, you're simultaneously living your past and your future, right? You're seeing yourself uh, grow up uh, within your children. So you also see that base innocence in children that you absorb within yourself again, right? So I think um, children are the biggest teachers to us if we keep our eyes and ears open and really listen to what they have to say. They come from a place of such purity that I don't think there's any other way to really look at the world. I feel like, uh, I mean, to a certain extent, one and a half years back, my world was completely turned upside down. And I'm so happy for that to happen. And if we could really, like I said, instill that um, within our community in terms of from the kids, learn from the kids in some way or the other through events and through some social gatherings, that would be the best way to really pull this forward and get in touch with your inner selves once again, because sometimes we might have forgotten, you know, where we really are. Thank you very much, Rashna. There was also a very nice thing that I heard through WhatsApp the other day. My mom read it out to me. So thank <coughs> you, mommy. And that is when trees are planted. So Dr. Behram Pastakia is here today, who has planted trees um, and helped other people do this to conserve 
what we think is conserving nature, but in real reality, trees speak to us. My mom often speaks to trees. So there is um, an inner voice that is in every living creature, which is the Fravashi, as we recognize, of course, in the Mas Desni Zartoshti Daina. So my question or thought is not just listening to the inner voice, but listening to the inner voice of all creation and the communion that we can encourage through not planting one tree, but that, that WhatsApp message that trees talk to each other and grow well when they're in a community. A code of scientific research has proven that. So with that thought, if Behram Pastakia would like to share anything, I'd request him also to come on board. But in that time, I'd like to bring in Dr. Maruk Thamboli and then Mabit Saib Zareer Bhandara. I would just like to make a comment that sometimes when we are at a session, uh, we may know what prayers to pray, but if we haven't prayed those prayers multiple times ourselves, then it's hard to follow what the Everett Sahib is praying. I was wondering, since Hashem Vahu Yathahu Erion Yange Hatham are universal prayers, um, could we just ask, especially our youngsters who are not used to, and myself, not used to praying all these prayers by heart and going at the same speed, could the participants just say either one of those prayers? Um, yes, definitely, Dr. Tamboli. And then um, we'll ask Zari Sahib to, Mabit Sahib Zari, to honor your request if he's happy to do so. And then my mommy wants to say something. But before um, mommy speaks, we'd like to bring in Dr. Behram Pastake also. So Mabit Sahib Zari, would you like to pray for us, please? Let's uh, <clears throat> let's hear Dr. Pastakia first. Okay. And then you, Mama. Uh, okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I wanted to share uh, a book. If you can see, it, it's called Braiding Sweetgrass. It is written by a lady called Robin Wall Kimmerer. She's an indigenous... American, who is also a PhD from University of Wisconsin. And she has written this book called Braiding Sweetgrass, which goes to the wisdom of the ancient American tribes. And in that, she talks about the council of the pecans, where the pecans, the trees are talking to each other. And how do they communicate? So the pecans are a very interesting tree to look at they flower and they bloom and they blossom all together in a group. And they don't do it every year. They only do it after three years or four years. And that is a mechanism they have developed in order to propagate themselves. So how do these uh, trees communicate with each other? That is the question. And scientifically, it has been shown that they communicate under the ground, through their roots and through fungi. It's a very interesting concept for us to learn and understand. So first off, I would suggest that all those on this forum, please take a look at this book. When I read it, I was amazed to see there are so many rituals of the American Indian tribes, which are similar to Zoroastrian thought. We have Char Disano Namaskar. They have a very similar ritual. We get up in the morning and do the Hoshbang. They have a very similar ritual. We look to the East for our early morning prayers. They do the same. We have the ancient Iranian uh, symbol of the swastik, which we use at the Madosaro ceremony or when we use at the Adar Maino Adar Roj uh, Parab. <clears throat> and that is an ancient symbol which lifts up air, water, fire, earth. We heard that from Iran today by this wonderful presentation made by uh, Gustav, uh, the lady who was so brilliant. Those are the things which bring us all together and we can celebrate those together. So uh, this is a wonderful concept. I, uh, I won't take too much long. I'll just say two things. For planting trees, consider that every frontline worker in the world in the COVID-19 has been giving up themselves. 
could we imagine if we celebrated that service by planting a tree for each frontline worker, wherever we live? And the last thing I'll talk about is vegetarianism. Edward Zarid Bandara has often told us about this. And right now, the federal government of the United States is starting a program to address the issue of food and hunger. And there's a move in the US Congress by congressmen coming together to say that every federal canteen, whether it is in a museum or whether it is in a cafeteria run by the federal government or a park should have an option of a vegetarian dish. This is the time for us to reach out to such enlightened elected representatives and together with civil society, a public private partnership with the government, we can move this needle forward. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Dr. Bairam Pastakia. Mami Jaru, or as Zarisa says, Jaruma, what did you want to say? And then we'll hand over to uh, Mr. Jangir Sarosh and then back to Mabit Sahib Zarir. And my answer, to Jangir Sarosh Saib, I would like to bring out a fact from my childhood. When my grandpa, who was a priest for 60 odd years in an Agari in Pune, JJ Agari, he used to take me on his lap and make me understand what prayers are. I was hardly two or three years old, maybe four. And he would tell me, now close your eyes and can you picture your own self? Can you see your own self inside your eyes? And I would say, no, I don't have any idea of anything. I can only see dark. Then he would show me my face in the mirror and he'll tell me, now can you see inside your eyes? Now look at this point between your eyes. Can you see yourself? Yes, grandpa, I can see myself. Now, take a look at this picture. And he would show me Asho Zartosh Saib's photograph and say, now can you see this picture in your eyes? And I would say, yes, I can now see that picture in my eyes. Now talk to him. Talk to him and say, I am a good girl. Make me a good girl. I want to be just like you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. And this is how I started looking at my own image and seeing whether I was doing the right thing or the wrong thing, right from my childhood. Whether I was like Jatos Saib. And then he taught me 101 names yeah. with their meanings and their qualities. And slowly, as I grew up, I began to understand a little more and a little more and a little more to what I understand today. And that is communication mm -hmm. with the higher self, which is your own self, which is your own entity, your Frabashi. Mm -hmm. Combine your mind with that mind. Mind is not in the brain. Mind is in each cell of your body, around you all over. That is how it's like one ocean communicating with the other ocean, one tree communicating with the other tree. There is communication all around mm -hmm. and with our higher selves and in the ether. Our people who pass away are still there in the ether in the form of energy. That energy is universal. If you just close your eyes and think of a person that you've lost, you think you've lost that person, you haven't lost that person at all. That person will be there the moment you close your eyes and image that person and start talking to that person. 
your will will be done. Thank you. Thank you, Mami. Oja Ruma Zari Saib says, we would like to involve Dr. Farzane Goshtas for her views also on this question by Mr. Jangir Sarosh. But before that, Jangir, you want something more to say. Please go ahead. Then Banu will bring you in also. Yazdi Tatra Saib, lots of work for you spotlighting everyone today. What a splendid session. Jangir, thank you for your super question. Please go ahead. Um, I've asked you to unmute. Uh, maybe we'll pass on to Mabit Saib Zareer. But in that time, please, I'm asking oh. you to unmute. Go ahead. Sorry, I was not allowed to unmute, uh, but I'm back. <coughs> um, what I was referring to and uh, was the discipline that you go through as a to be a nirvad, the, the re retreat you go on to find yourself, that, that sort of retreat is, I've had the pleasure of going on retreats with Buddhists, uh, with Christians, with others, but I've never been able to go on a retreat to find myself or to be guided to find myself. I think it is probably a better way of saying. And I think that is something that is lacking, which you, the movers, have the privilege of receiving but the laity does not. And I think that is something that needs to be offered to the laity. That's where I, I believe one has a greater opportunity to do and connect as Jaru has just mentioned. Thank you. Mabit Saib Zareer, may I invite you for your thoughts? And Dr. Farzane Goshtasp, may I invite you after Mabit Saib Zareer for your thoughts? Yes, Mabit Saib Zareer, please go ahead. Yes. First of all, I would like to thank Dr. Farzane Goshtasp for bringing out a very important point from the scholastic perspective of Gambar and Hamazori that we come together physically in community and become one in prayers. And that oneness is the most important thing. To answer or to reflect on Dr. Jangir Sarosh's uh, question, which very beautifully, was very beautifully answered by uh, Erwet Zuxis Pantaki and uh, Ms. Rashna Sanjana. It's the individual and collective consciousness. And when we talk about the spirituality and we talk and read and keep talking about it, but actually it is not there. We don't find it. We don't find it out there because it's inside us, it's within us. And we have to make that journey within us. And how does that happen? Through meditative prayers. And if you ask me how, what, I will not be able to answer you in words because it is purely experience. It's an experiential level, which we have to experience it on an individual and collective platform. When that happens, you will have all the answers. Not that you will be able to talk about it, but you'll feel fulfilled in your heart, inside, within you. And how does that happen? Through meditative prayers. It is not when Erwitz become Erwitz, but it is what they do after becoming an Erwitz that brings them to that status where they communion with higher spiritual beings. And guess what? They don't even know that this is happening, but it happens all the time. 
Dr. Karishma Koka, you mentioned about Baudam, the consciousness of our soul, which continues with us even when we don't have this physical material body anymore. And all the things that we have heard about heaven and hell, it's not physical places, but it's our experience. That is why in Sanskrit and Gujarati, we call Anu Bhav for experience. That is, Anu is the atom going through different experiences, going through different Bhav to become better and better and perfect. So eventually, there'll be oneness with that mega spirit when everything will be perfect at the time of resurrection. These are my humble experiences that I'm sharing. Thank I'm really you. grateful to you, Mabit Sahib Zareer, because what you have done is you have put things into context. You have reflected actively upon the gathas. You have reflected on our ancient prayers of the Masjidni Zarathushti Daina. You have explained to us the meaning of the Aat Yasna. The Yasna when we do our Kasti is also a part of internal reflection. The yasna that we perform, the 72 yasna has that or the chapters that we are reflecting upon when we do the yasna is also a form of communion. And then Dr. Behram Pastakya has often mentioned this, that on the, the tenth day after Tirgan, in the ancient Iranian tradition, we not just tie the rainbow colored band upon our wrist and then put that into the river, but the plants that have been grown I think this is at the 10th day after Navroz. Correct me if I'm wrong. The plants that have been grown in the ancient tradition in Iran are grown without soil so that the roots can communicate with each other. As Dr. Pastakya mentioned, this is researched upon. Harvard School has an excellent uh, research base on how the roots communicate with each other in addition to the book that um, Dr. Pastakya mentioned. So thank you very much for your reflection upon this. We will take the comment by... Uh, Mr. Mabediar Bhujwala, who has also um, some thoughts to share. And we will thank Mabed Saib Zareer for his helping Mabediars to be trained in understanding the prayers and explaining the prayers to the world. Thank you, Mabed Saib Zareer. We respect you a great deal. Mabediar Manik Bhujwala, please continue. Yeah. Thank yes, you. Uh, I was just going to comment, uh, you know, what Jaru Anti was saying. Uh, when I uh, did a funeral ceremony for an Iranian uh, gentleman in his middle age, and uh, th there was this young little daughter, you know, and so I consoled her, you know, that, you know, you can always, your dad is uh, still there, and you can always talk to him, you know, look at, uh, have his picture, have a light a little candle, and talk to him, you know, and, uh, you know, that he will listen to you. And, uh, you know, that's a very, uh, it's a kind of based on our faith, you know, in that kind of thing. Even when my late wife, you know, she passed away, I used to practice that, you know, uh, in order to uh, feel in connection with her, you know. Uh, you know, I would say good morning, good night, you know, and things like that. And uh, that kind of is a very important principle that we can follow. You know, the other thing I have to say is that we should all start using the word Zarathushti instead of Zoroastrian, uh, you know, because uh, otherwise our original name of our prophet will not be remembered, you know. And I know it's difficult because uh, everywhere you say Zoroaster, Zoroastrian, all that, but that was something that the Greek philosophers started calling him that way, you know. But the original name is what we should do. When I do my written communication, what I do is I will say Zarthushti and then in parenthesis Zoroastrian so that people who only know Zoroastrian, they know that, okay, the original name is Zarthushti kind of thing. So, and uh, other thing is that I try to spread the information about our religion uh, and history by uh, being involved in several interfaith organizations, you know, uh, currently, I am the president of the uh, Huntington Beach Interfaith Council, and uh, I recently helped to co-found a peace center in the, uh, in the Seritas College in Norwalk, where we are going to have uh, interfaith type events, you know, every year 
and the next one is on non-violence coming in on October 1st. So I, I, I would uh, urge our young Jarthoshtis also to get involved with interfaith organizations, and that way people know what our religion is, what our history is. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Mabadiyar, Mr. Bujwala. We have some comments from Banu, Auntie, and uh, Auntie Rukshana, if we could please find them, Yesdi. And I would really appreciate it if Dr. Farzane Goshtas uh, comes in and gives us her thoughts on how better we can communicate um, with our inner light, our inner fravashi, our Ahura Mazda's essence in each one of us and with others. Yes, Ranji Rukshana, please go ahead. Nati Samjatu Rukshana, Aunty. We can't hear you. Unmute. Unmute yourself. Yes, D. Tantra Sahib would have put a little note there saying, please unmute. Would you just unmute? Vanish. We will give Auntie Rukshana a moment to unmute herself. And as soon as she does, we'll pass on the mic to her. In that time, would you be able to find uh, Banu Auntie, if Banu Auntie is still on? Sir, it's you there. Please go ahead. Sorry, I said Auntie. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Unmute yourself. Hi. Hello, this is Saurabh. I'm using uh, Banu's iPad. I just wanted to... I just wanted to highlight uh, what I was saying in my chat that uh, uh, when, we, when we are in a fun fair and we catch our father's finger, we enjoy everything in the fun fair. But as soon as our father's finger is lost, we are lost in that fun fair. Everything is dark for us. You get, don't enjoy anything. So I have seen from India, Iran, and America that people are lost in this fun fair. And my good friend Zareer, with his meditative prayers, tries to uh, uh, lead us to our father's fingers. Because our mind is always controlled by two emotions, fear and ego. And the soul is egoless and fearless. So this amalgamation of the mind and the soul is such a complex thing. So only with the meditative prayers which Zareer does, and the vegetarian diet, which I have seen in a lot of Buddhist vipassana centers and all, Gayatri Mandir, then only we can reach salvation by, uh, by removing this mind and soul connection. So Zari does a very noble job by at least guiding us the right path. And he does it religiously every day, day in and day out in California. And I'm thankful to him and his family. God bless him. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Um, Auntie Rukshana, I think you'll be able to unmute. No, we can't hear you. I think you have to learn sign language, although your magical smile does convey your joy and spreads joy in the true spirit of Ushta. God bless you, God that, but I can't still hear you. So we leave you to try a little longer. Yesdi, could you highlight um, anybody else who would like to say? I think I'm going to go through the chat now. Jale, Kai Dotiwala, Zenobia Lala. Zenobia Lala actually thanks Mr. Dotiwala for his comment about braiding sweet grass from Dr. Pastakya's message. Um, F.S. Bhagat says, thank you everyone for sharing your knowledge, especially to Karishma, thank you, sir, and Erva Zareer. We've got a Huti Contractor, would you like to, I should say, Mabedyar Huti Contractor. If you'd like to unmute yourself, Mabedyar Sahib, and um, speak, please go ahead. If you're still here. Mabedyar Huti Contractor says, um, oh, wow, Jeroma, that was amazing. A great way to teach children. I agree. She also thanks us and the organizers. Yes, the organizers, Baba Meher, Yes, the Tatra. We thank you all. Auntie Rukshana has given up and gone. So with that, I think we'll bring in our youth, Rashna Sanjana, our speaker, Dr. Farzane Goshtas. Why don't you read her message out? Uh, okay. Oh, that's... 
Rukshana auntie has um, not left a message, unfortunately. She wanted to say something important. I can't find her message. So um, if I'd like to bring in Dr. Goshtasp, Rashna Sanjana, Ervat Saheb, Xerxes Pantaki to conclude the session and then hand over to Mavrat Saheb Zareer for his final words and a humbandagi. Dr. Farzane, first, may I hand over to you? Any thoughts you would like to share with us on the questions asked and your own work and any guidance you have for us? Um, uh, I again uh, want to um, uh, thank you and uh, all of your um, colleagues uh, for um, this, uh, this program. And um, I don't have anything else uh, to add uh, to um, uh, valuable uh, words that uh, was said uh, in this session. And um, um, I again uh, want to thank you and um, praise for you all. Thank you very much, Dr. Farzane Goshtas. We have a message from uh, Mr. Kai Dotiwala, who would also like to share another comment. Of course, Mr. Dotiwala, Mr. Yajdi Tantra will help you unmute. In that time, may I please hand over the mic to Arvad Sahib, respected Xerxes Pantaki. I just wanted to say thank you all, for everyone, for coming to today's session. It's been a wonderful experience to talk to you all. Um, and that we hope that you've taken uh, a lot of what we've said and to keep keep up with the community spirit and keep on uh, engaging with your peers, your elders and your youngers as well to help grow our community and ensure it keeps going strongly. Rashne Sanjana, Rashna Sanjana, would you like to share your thoughts? I think um, this has been a really enlightening experience. So thank you so much, you know, for the to the organizers for doing this. I think one takeaway from this would be that our community is so widespread and sort of functions in such silos is that um, we're grateful to have people like you to really bring us together, no matter what, uh, you know, corner of the world we are in, what time it is. <laughs> Uh, but this has been a great experience. And if we can sort of uh, build on this, like uh, Dr. Farzana had said, and have something that's a little more global um, for the youth to participate in and sort of keep connected through, I think that would really sort of, um, you know, pull the needle and pull us through to really forming that one community spirit that uh, we have. So thank you, you know, for doing this. Yeah. Thank you very much, Rashna. On that note, thank you so much for your kind encouragement. This is a global platform. And this is a platform for the youth of all ages, all the way from when they're born right up to when they're 100, 110. All the youth are included. Um, a big shout out to the Youth Congress organizers over the many years and to Baba Meher, who has been in it, the founder of the Youth Congresses. Thank you, because the Ahunavar says we receive the gift of the good mind when we take good action, or as another translation says, the good mind is used to take good fair action. I'd like to hand over to Mr. Dotiwala in a minute, but before that, along with the shout out to the Youth Congress organizers, including Ervat Sahib, respected Zaksis Pantaki, and the others, and respected Ervat Sahib Yazad Bhada, who's heading the speakers uh, team, et cetera, there is also a shout out to a very respectful call out to Zarthushtis across the world to participate in some form or another with the parliament of the world's religions. So we had um, many programs last year, including one that my mother participated in with respected Mabit Saib Zareer Bhandara and respected Ever Saib Jehan Bagli last year, among others, and a scientist, Dr. Hanoz Santok, and also another program with the uh, Kajeste Mystery and Dr. Farouk Mystery last year, which was uh, put to the Parliament of World Religions. But with that thought, I'd like to also say that a call to conscience for human rights is also being done by Mr. Jangir Saroj through Conversations Across Beliefs, through all the other interfaith work 
across the world, including by respected Mabit Sahib, Zareer Bhandara and others, by heads of various organizations in India, Fazana, ZTFE, all of you are doing this also, as Behram Pastakya said, Dr. Sahib said, by saving lives, as Mabit Sahib Zareer does, that is, an, and as Dr. Pastakya and all other people who have selflessly worked through COVID, doctors, nurses, people on the road who have saved lives, all of you who preserve the good minds of others, that essence of giving a chance to others, what we so-called called equity today, we say equity of opportunity, but preserving somebody's good mind is also a form of preserving human rights, is very much in the Zarathushti Daina, the messages of the Gathas, the messages of the ancient texts from the Yash to the Nyayeshas, it is there. It's not just something in the parliament of world religions, but it is something in all religions, science, good governance, the Cyrus Cylinder, and fundamentally in the Zarathushti Daina. So with that, all Zarathushtis across the world, please share the messages of Asho Zarathushtra Sahib and the Mazdiyasni Zarathushti Daina in all forms and all platforms, please. Mr. Kai Dotiwala, over to you, please. Feel free to call me Kaimers, that's fine. Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, with, with all due respect and humbleness, I'd like to uh, submit an alternative view from some of the views which have been presented this morning. Um, when we delve into the message of Asho Zarathustra, we find that it is it is going on a double track. It is going on the track of spirituality and also of this world. So continuously we are being asked to be of this world as well as be of assistance to the spiritual world. So when we are saying that, the, for example, the Prabhashis, or maybe I misunderstood you, that the Prabhashis are only over here within our hearts, that is true. But also, I believe that there, are all, there is also a spiritual world that we human beings, the physical people, are interacting. That is why when a kasti is woven, it is woven inside out. And then when it is finished, it is pulled out to show that there are two worlds on which we are reacting and interacting. Uh, same way when we say that our heaven and hell are on earth over here, then we are dissing the message of Asho Zarathustra because Asho Zarathustra in the Gathas very, very clearly uses the word garodemana, garotman besh, this is what our uh, our Gujarati people say it is garodemana is the correct word. And so basically he's talking about a heaven. He's talking about the house of songs. So should I take his message or should I take the message of somebody else? I, I, I respectfully submit, I would like to follow Asho Zarathustra. So, uh, so I just wanted to make uh, these few comments. And then when we look at his message in its most atomic being, it is unique from every other message, and I'm not dissing any other religion over here, but it is unique because it talks about an individual having the responsibility of bringing about change in the world. But it also is talking about people together as a community making the change for everybody. And so the individual is responsible, but the community is the one which is also going to benefit from the individual's responsibility. So when we talk about rights over here in the United States, which is very, very popular that it is my right, et cetera, we forget about the fact that there are so many responsibilities that come with that right. And I just wanted to make a couple of these comments. Thank you very much. That's a very fundamental principle of the Yasna 30.3 which follows, which I would, I'll just hand over to Mabit Sahib Zari to speak about, that says when um, in 30.2, it says Trauta Geosha and says kakaya tanuyet narem narem, each one for oneself think. It follows with for the right outcome for all. So linking the Fravashi, the concept of Frasho Kereti, collective and the individual. Good. I would like to hand over to Mabit Sahib Zari for his expert opinion now, please, along with your wonderful thoughts for which we give deep gratitude, Mr. Dotiwala. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Uh, sorry, I was not very clear when I when I was talking about the heaven and hell. It's it is there, but not as a geographical region like we understand as some country. Angre Rocha, the the house of songs, the the Mino Anneran, the house of lights, the infinite lights. That is where we have to go. And what does that mean? Those are allegorical terms, which means like full of wisdom, light is synonymous with wisdom and knowledge. So when we have uplifted ourselves to that level, we are reaching to heaven. And heaven is not a physical as a geographical region, but it's our own consciousness. So Zarathustra said, Paigambar said, in Gathas, what he's saying that we are go eventual goal is to reach heaven, but that heaven is not a geographical place, but how we feel, how we experience, and that experience in itself is heaven or hell. Like it is said that if you're in hell, you have to walk on uh, fire and brimstones, but you don't have the physical body. So then what it is, it is the experience. In heaven, you feel all the pleasures, but you don't have the physical body. It is the experience of the bowden, the consciousness of the soul. That is what it is. One yeah, thing, I... the couple of passages that I would like to give, one thing that we can do, the most important thing that we can do in life is save someone's life. There is nothing more important than life itself. Because if we don't have life, we don't more have more, anything. Nothing more the important. Most important action, like we talk about Shatmanam in Yatha video. Aunavaiti Gata, action. So if you can save someone's life, a human life, or for that matter, any life, that is the most important thing you can do. And how do we bring about unity in our community and society is no matter what labels we have, Shnum, Pandol, liberal, orthodox, ultra-orthodox, all of us can still be together pray together. Just we have to learn from our environment that in our environment, there are different kinds of trees, different kinds of earth, uh, the mountains and everything is so different. Yet everything yeah, works together. synergistically to bring about oneness and to reach the ultimate goal, the resurrection, to, bring, to make this place wonderful. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you very much, Mabit Saib Zarri. There's a message from Banu to say, I just wanted to, sorry, I just wanted to share what your respected mother just said about seeing your image in the mirror and seeing your face in the mirror and that way you can see your inner self. Thank you very much, sir, and Auntie Banu for that. We'd also like to thank our young Ervat Saib, Ervat Zerxis Pantaki, who as a professional has come contributing and encouraging other young Mabit Sahibs to contribute. Rashna has um, kept her little daughter away from her own time or bereft of her time to be with us today as Dithantra is awake in India at this late hour. Thank you very much. It's late in Iran, Dr. Farzane Goshas. Thank you very much. To all of you, thank you very much. And um, this is a message for the little one. There is something called the Kratum, which is both innate wisdom and acquired wisdom. So before Zarir Saheb goes, let us request him to highlight Kratum and end with any prayer he would like. So it's not just the rights of other people that we preserve with responsibility, but also the rights of the young ones and their innocence, because they have the solutions to the problems that don't even yet exist in the world, because it's their good mind that will give us the future. Zari Sahib, please close the session when you're ready. Asne Kheredi and Gosho Shrute Kheredi. Those are the two types of intellects. Asne Kharedi is innate wisdom, Goshut Surute Kharedi is acquired wisdom. So through our innate wisdom, we have to help our acquired wisdom to better and better in every day, every step of our life. And to end you, today's session, yes. we'll recite one Yatha Kuriyo and two Ashimbos. Thank together. you very much. Thank you so much, Zarir Sahib, in advance. That Those phrases are also found in the Dua Nam Satayashne for all those of you who attend boy regularly and hear the Dua Nam Satayashne. We have that inner communion to answer Jahangir's question with every boy. 
every Mabit Sahib is giving this opportunity to us five times a day. Thank you. Yatha hu vairyo atharatu asham chithacha vange ho shrazao nanango shot nanam ange ho shmansai shatvencha ahurai Ain Dregubyo Dadan was starring Ashim Bohu Vahishtam Asri Ushta Asri Ushta Amai Yet Ashai Vahishtai Ashim Ashim Bohu Vahishtam Asti Ushta Asti Ushta Amai Yad Ashai Vahishta Yashim. Thank you, Mabit Sahib Zari. Thank you, Yazdi. Mami, you wanted to say something? Please close the program after that. In context with the prayers at the time of Jashan or boy or any other prayers, when the Dasuji or the Mabeds are praying, if you just pay attention to their voice, to their words, you will be in communication with the higher self. You don't have to read prayers. You don't have to do anything when the prayers are being done for you by the Dasujis, by the Mabeds, even the Gesarna and various other um, prayers, you just give, lend your ears to the uh, Dasujis and Mabeds, pay your full attention with all your might, and you will be one with them and with the Fravashis all around the world. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Puti contractor says, Jaruma, blessings. Just meditate, it is uplifting. Thank you, Yesdi said, for promoting us to get together. God bless you. Aura Mazda bless you. Bye bye, all. Hamazor, Hamashobad, Hamazor Beam, Hamazor. <laughs>